So thank you all for being here today. My name is Megan Downey and I am the Postgraduate Recruitment Officer for Ulster University. So within this postgraduate information session, you will have the chance to hear from our postgraduate students and alumni. So I'd like to introduce our panel. So firstly, we have Seamus Parr, who has undertaken our Masters in Health Psychology. Then we have Emma Hughes, who has undertaken our Business Improvement course. Next, we have Simon McGavigan, who has done our, let me see, manufacturing management course. That's right. And then we have Beverly, who has undertaken our Masters of Education uh, postgraduate program as well. So I'm going to give them um, a minute or two to introduce themselves, their background, and why they've undertaken postgraduate study. So we'll start with Seamus first. Is that okay? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, thanks, Megan. And I'm delighted to be here. Um, again, as you mentioned, my name is Seamus Purr. Uh, having spent the bulk of my career in corporate employment, uh, I came to the point in life where I began to question why. On the face of things, I had been successful, inverted commas, but, but somehow deep down, there was an increasing sense of unhappiness or lack in my life. So that was a kind of a wake-up call for me, I guess. So this led me to explore taking specific postgraduate studies, having developed an interest in psychology. Uh, from books I had been reading around that time. This is about 15 years or so ago. Um, so my um, master's in health psychology from Ulster University in 2018 uh, was a key stepping stone for me to help me enable, uh, to enable me to follow, I guess, my own heart and establish my own business, which I would never have thought about doing earlier on in my career. And then ultimately now I have a passion for, for serving people just like me who are ready to and open to heeding their own warning signs or their own passions and interests and are prepared to start living life from the heart with more personal purpose. So, so thanks, Megan. That's a little bit about me. That's great. Thank you so much, Seamus. Um, before we go on to the next person, see when someone's speaking, can the rest of you turn on your mic? I can see that there's a bit of background noise, if that's OK. But uh, Emma, could you just give us a wee brief, brief outline, please? That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Um... My name is Emma Hughes. Um, I graduated, I suppose, um, in 2006 with a radiography degree, so my background is completely healthcare. Um, I then didn't get a job at that time, um, and there were a lot of us that kind of went our different separate paths, and I then went and did a postgrad with the University of Birmingham um, as an anaesthetic associate. So. I did that through working as well within the, one of the trusts um, here in Northern Ireland. And since then, I graduated and in 2009 and I've been working just as an anaesthetic associate in the Health Trust. Um, again, a bit like Seamus, you become a bit frustrated, um, especially in the health service, uh, especially in the status in at the minute. But in 2019, I decided I'll go back and um, do the business improvement um, master's. Um, with University of Ulster. Um, pretty much my role in work is to improve services, um, improve anaesthetics, push people through theatre, um, make things more efficient and in my role I couldn't do that and I just kind of I felt there was more that I could do so that's what led me to um, studying and um, postgraduate with um, University of Ulster. Um, uh, and during that, I have um, set up a business um, with the things that I've learned with the Business Improvement Programme. It's kind of inspired me to see there's an awful lot more out there. And although um, I'm still with the health service, and I have started up my own business called Freedom and Waves. And it's basically to inspire people to keep going. And that's, that's really the message. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you, Emma, so much. Really appreciate it. Um, Simon, do you want to give your wee brief outline? Yeah, so my name is Simon McGavigan. Um, initially, I did a, a degree in uh, mechanical engineering at Queen's, and I spent about four or five years working in industry. I always wanted to get a master's, so I decided to do my master's kind of part time. Um, so while I was doing the course, I kind of got a bit of itchy feet and decided here, this job isn't for me. <laughs> so I left that just, uh, just as I was starting the dissertation, and I decided I wanted to make myself a guitar to carbon fiber. And the more I looked, the more I realized here, no one's actually doing this and doing this well. Um, so through talking to the University of Ulster, they kind of pushed me here to look more into it. And so I started a business, uh, researching it and developing it, and actually got a bit of funding and the University of Ulster pushed me to actually reach out to a couple of different people in industry and people within the, within the sector uh, to actually get a bit of funding and a bit of support. 
and that's now pushed me to you know I've been in the last six months I've had about three hundred sales of accessories and things related to guitars, and I'm ready to take my guitars to market, and I'm now my own boss of my own company. So the, the what kind of instigated that was actually the dissertation at that University of Ulster. And I'm very happy about it. That's great. Thank you so much, Simon. And lastly, but not least, Beverly. Hi, Megan. Thanks for having me along today. My name is Beverly McCormick. I am a teacher, uh, although I've recently moved into business into the edtech space. Um, like Emma, uh, I did my first degree quite some time ago. It was actually 2003 when I graduated as a teacher. Um, and after that, I went straight into teaching primary school and I stayed in the same school teaching for just under 17 years. But during that time, you know, there were a number of courses that I was able to do to develop myself professionally um, as a teacher, but they were all sort of bitty and there was, you know, a little bit of leadership here and a little bit of curriculum here and a, a little bit of PE or a little bit of STEM and nothing that really I felt challenged me and pushed me that bit more as opposed to, you know, just attending a day out um, and that was done. You got a nice certificate. So in 2018, I decided after deliberating and thinking about doing a master's for quite a few years and then, you know, kids came along or something else got in the way. Um, I said it was finally time to get started. <clears throat> so I needed to do a course that I could um, do while working, but also from home because um, where I live, it's a bit of a trek up to Belfast two nights a week to, uh, to do a course. So Something that was online really appealed to me, and that's what Ulster uh, was able to provide. During the time while I was doing my um, postgrad masters, I ended up leaving the classroom. A job came up in a global ed tech company, um, and I applied for it. I didn't think, you know, that I would get it, but there was enough experience that I'd have had in the classroom, along with what I'd already learnt through the the postgrad course, uh, sort of to propel me into that space. Um, and a, a little bit then, like Simon, the, the um, dissertation that I did towards the end of my degree actually put me in a, a really good position for the job that I recently moved into. Um, it was almost as if it was written for me. So um, that's a little bit about me. That's great. Thank you so much, Beverly. I could listen to the four of you all day just telling me about your stories. They're also very interesting. <laughs> I honestly could, but no, thank you so much for introducing yourselves. I really appreciate it. So I'm just going to ask one more question. Now, majority of you guys have actually already told me why you've decided to undertake a postgraduate study. But I have one question actually for you, Emma. How did you manage your studies part time as well as having two kids and, you know, just a lot going on? Um, caffeine, <laughs> pretty much. Um, very, very late nights. Um, so I come home from work. I work a four day a week. Um, and just kind of got a bit of my study done after nine after kids went to bed, which wasn't most nice because usually they're up till half ten. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, up till about two, maybe in the morning, getting up for work at six. I did that for a wee while, and my sleep pattern wasn't the greatest then after after uh, about six months of that. Um, so I, I, I kind of just just managed it, just juggled it. You do what you have to do. Now other things like state of your house, <laughs> like painting that hasn't been done in a couple of years, you know. But other things do suffer. But you know, generally you just kind of balance things with lists um a calendar um yeah and just get it done when you can get it done and to be honest just like parenting and everything it's survival and you just do everything that you can do and the best that you can do every day and whatever whatever doesn't get done it doesn't get done and it's not the end of the world but just keep going and do it <laughs> so you would say that you know even though you do have a busy life it didn't stop you from undertaking this you know your postgraduate degree you kind of just thought you know what if i'm gonna do it now I'll do yeah. it now. Yeah. Totally. Um, I needed something. I think I was so frustrated in work that I did need something that was going to distract me. And it was a completely new, completely different ball game. Um, now it was based within the health service, but it was service of purpose. It was learning about businesses, and that just the entire world just fascinated me that I didn't know about it. You know, so um, that interest and the kind of always 
having this farm ability to do something more or start a business. I've always had that, but I've always sat in the health service because that's what I did. That's what I trained in. And I just kept, kept going at that. But um, I find it like fascinating and I've real, and I've started my own business off the side of it, which is great. So um, yeah, I can't, can't complain. I am busy, but to just do it. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much, Emma. Simon, actually, I'd like to hear your feedback about, you know, managing your studies as well, because you did mention that you did it part time. Um, I, well, there, there's kind of two things that made it easier for me. Number one is I, I enrolled part time, but in terms of what modules I book up in the different terms, it was very flexible. Um, so I think for the first year, I doubled up my modules. I did far more than I needed to. And that was kind of because work let me do it then. But then I found later on I wasn't as able to do that. So the last couple of modules, I spread it across the year. Um, so that, that was very much benefit. And then the other thing was I, I was always in England and back and, and things like that. But I found that the actual content of the course was very close to the experience I had. You know, in, in industry alone, I had probably five or six years experience. And a lot of the content of the course covered kind of what I would have called common knowledge at that stage. So it meant that I, I could pick up things quite easily. And then anything I didn't get, the, the lecture was quite flexible and making me outside of class hours and this and that and the other. Um, so I, I found it quite easy in terms of the classes. Now, when the dissertation came, it, it came like a train. It was a lot of work in that. But again, that, that was then something I was starting the business in. And uh, I was quite happy just to, to spend the time at it. But the classes particularly were, were very flexible. And the lectures were very easy to work around um, when I could be in Belfast and when I couldn't be in Belfast. Because obviously, I'm, I'm from Strabane. Um, and I was working at Cookstown, but then I was in England three days a week. So it didn't always work out very handy. But, but no, it was definitely flexible. And it it worked, worked to suit me. That's great. I find, um, because I'm undertaking a master's course in marketing as well, working full time, that the staff are really helpful and they do try and make it a lot more flexible for you to, you know, because a lot of people that do undertake a master's is working full time. But no, that's great. Thank you so much, Simon. I really appreciate it. So my next question is, how has your life changed since beginning your studies and doing your postgraduate degree? Seamus, could you give us a wee little outline on that? Um, sure, Megan. Yeah, I mean, so I resonate a lot with what Emma has mentioned there about frustration and, and maybe even agitation and feeling restrained in the corporate employment of the corporate world. I had kind of just been fell into, honestly, without any particular plan um, from a young age. Like, in, you know, for example, when I left school, I wasn't really even sure what I wanted to do with, with my life. And I, and I think I would say that's that's normal for most people. Um, if if I was still or hadn't taken on the study or haven't really followed my heart, I guess I would still be languishing in a life and career, feeling restrained, feeling frustrated and not just living truly to how I wanted to live my life. Um, and, you know, the masters in health psychology really gave me the skills and the wake up and the school, the tools and the techniques to be able to actually really connect with what really mattered to me. And then, you know, with my life experience, I was able to actually then marry that to the, the behavior change skills primarily um, in the master's course and then blend that into something that just almost fell into place automatically with setting up powering health then so for me it was a transformation from unhappiness into something that I really connected with and there was real purpose in you know what I was doing with my life you know that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Seamus. Um, Beverly, could you let me know, um, has your course actually allowed you to build your network, you know, meet new people from different backgrounds or even within your field? Um, yes and no, in some ways, um, because my course was purely online, I didn't actually get to meet anyone face to face, um, apart from a few calls. That said, teachers tend to flock together. So there are a couple of, of people who were on different modules with me who I still keep in contact with. Um, we're connected on LinkedIn, on Twitter, social media sites like that. A um, couple of the lecturers still keep in contact with me as well, which is great. Um, and even through conversations um, with the people who were on the courses with me and the lectures, it, it did open um, my eyes and my understanding to what is out there and what other opportunities are available for teachers. So I would say the course itself perhaps didn't put me in contact with people, but the course in what it was gave me the, the confidence and the skills to then reach out and to sort of put myself out there and make connections beyond um, the degree itself. Um, so that's what I would say, yes and no, not 
not exactly in, in through the, uh, the modules itself, but definitely um, it whet my appetite as well. So, you know, in terms of the different modules I did that looked at um, ICT in education or leadership in education, that in itself caused me then to go and research people online and make connections there and use what I was learning uh, through the, the classes and through the modules as a conversation point to say, you know, I've learned about this, what's your take on it or how do you apply this in your business, in, in your school or, or wherever. So um, I think it's like anything in life, you have to make it what you need it to be. You know, the course could have presented 10 or 15 special speakers to me who would have talked at me and I would never have made a personal connection with them. But the course actually was more um, more alive in some senses. You know, it was more adaptable and and gave you the possibility to to reach out. Would you say that your course has allowed you to gain skills and knowledge that the now has actually helped you to get this new role in this new company that you're you know you've been able to widen your horizon basically, or you know just based on what the course has taught you, not just the knowledge but the skills that you've been able to gain through that. I think that part of that, I mean, a huge part for me would have been confidence. You know, I taught in the same school for such a long time, in the same circles. It was hard to break out of that at times. You know, it's, um, you know, a day out here or a day out there doesn't really make any real connections. But then when I started the courses, you know, yes, they were intense, but I did find it quite manageable because, you know, I could apply my years experience in the classroom and as a school leader and, you know, the work I did in school improvement. And it was actually applicable to the content that we were covering and it created a really good talking point. So, yes, it, definitely it, it did give me the opportunity then to apply what I was learning moving forward. So, you know, it was the confidence to say, actually, you have this, you know this, you've extended yourself, now you can put yourself out there. And as a result, the, the dissertation that I did focused on the use of video as a tool to support learning education uh, and you know, student improvement and that's exactly where I'm sitting now. I'm working for a company that produces educational videos globally um, you know and I, I get to work in what I believe what I'm very passionate about um, and talk to teachers all day about how they can use video to support their teaching and learning and develop good pedagogy so um, the course for me I, I couldn't have asked for more. It, it, ticked all the boxes, it did exactly what it needed to do for me. But it also gave me the confidence to to really sort of mould it to what I needed it to be as well. Thank you so much, Beverly. That's brilliant. Simon, I'm actually going to ask you that same question. Has your course within Ulster University helped you gain skills and knowledge? Um, you know, because I know you've started your own business as well. Has that helped you in any way? I, I think it definitely has. I, th I think a big problem that I had, like I, I was very academic from a young age and I was very motivated. So the, the whole time you go through GCSEs and SA levels and you go through A levels and that's university and you go for university and straight out into the grad scheme. But no one at any stage says here, you could be your own boss, you could go start a company. And it wasn't really until I got the Ulster that it was even a consideration in my head. I was just head down the whole time. What's the next link on the ladder or link in the chain? And a lot of things in university also are very towards uh, when you're managing your own business, when you're doing this. And even the, the kind of extracurricular stuff, the, the enterprise team, and, and the, I know yourself and, and Chris on, and the actual enterprise team pushed me to go look at options and see what funding was available and talk to Invest NI. And uh, that was all kind of very beneficial. And then even just like, getting things down, like my, my elevator pitch and, you know, presenting my business and my ideas, you know, that was all developed through the course. And then even through the presentation of the of the dissertation, like I've used that exact same presentation about ten times since <laughs> trying to get a bit of fun going and, and present my business to different people and things, you know, and it's all kind of dovetailed so well into what I'm doing anyway. Um, and that's what I meant even earlier when saying with the classes. The classes were all based on real world stuff that I'd been doing, and then the dissertation was all what I'm working towards, you know. So that definitely all worked out. And as I say, the it was it was definitely just the right place, the right time for me to push towards this direction. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Simon. So I'm going to ask each of you um, one question um, and we'll go in order. So what has been your biggest achievement to date? Now it can be something small, it can be something personal, it can be something big, but we'll start with you, Seamus. Um, yeah, I mean, as I was thinking about this before the, the call today, and I think ultimately for me, it's um, 
accepting and being happy who I am. And it goes back, I think, to what Beverly maybe mentioned around confidence and so on, and the power of that lies within rather than, you know, what we convince ourselves lies without and trying to please other people and maybe going on a different path. And that for me is probably my biggest achievement is ultimately and finally waking up to the fact that, you know, that connection we have to ourselves and trusting our own gut and instincts and heart is probably the most important I've ever the important thing I've ever done in my life. And I'm continuing to to kind of build on and develop the power of making that connection. So that for me is probably the biggest achievement and maybe a challenge that's facing a lot of people as well in the in this modern busy chaotic world, I guess. So yeah, that's it for me. Thank you, Seamus. Beverly. Oh, I have thought long and hard about this. <laughs> it's not an easy, uh, an easy question to answer. Um, definitely, like Seamus, confidence is there, and that you know, I think when I did my first degree, um, I lacked confidence. I was I wasn't even sure who I was. You know, I was trotting through, thinking that I wanted to be a teacher, and you know, sort of, you just you go from one step to the next. Um, but I think I've reached a point in life where I'm satisfied and, you know, that doesn't mean I've given up on things. It means I'm not measuring myself against anybody else anymore, you know, and probably probably doing the masters came with that. But, you know, you always look at people and you think, oh, they're doing that. They're in those circles. Oh, I could never do that. But I was able to work and change, you know, jobs in the middle of it. Um, I've got two kids like Emma and you know, manage a house and, you know, I'm, I'm here, uh, I'm at the other end. I'm in a job that I wanted to be in. I've got the job that I wanted to be at, be at. And yes, there's, you know, there's work still to be done, but I think becoming satisfied in, or knowing how to be satisfied with what you have at a moment in time is um, probably um, the biggest achievement. If, uh, if my husband's listening, it's, it's obviously marrying him and having two kids and a nice little family. But for myself, it's the confidence and that satisfaction of knowing that I am happy where I am at this time. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Beverly. Simon, do you want to go next? Um, I think I think just being your own boss is the first that comes with that. It's something, you know, that, that Kenny even realised recently there for Halloween, me and a few friends wanted to go away. And two of them couldn't go because they couldn't get off work. You know, it's just the flexibility. So, no, I, I don't even have to ask anyone. You know, if I if I'm ahead of schedule, I, I can just go. And it's that flexibility. And I've always been someone who worked really long hours and, and really long days for for other people. But now you're doing it for yourself. There's a lot more satisfaction comes with that. And you're just it's just the flexibility. And, and when you're working towards something, you can see the results. And you're taking something from start to finish. You're not just suffering on a conveyor belt. You're designing up something and handing it to someone else. You know, you're you're seeing full projects. You're you're dealing with customers and you're coming up with ideas. You know, so it's just all that that comes with being your own boss. It just it's it's it suits me to the ground. <laughs> Thank you so much, Simon. Um, lastly but not least, Emma. Um, I think just I like Seamus, like like everyone, you kind of go on, along with going to school, going to uni, you know, doing things that everyone else is doing. But if you know there's something inside you that you, you need to be doing yourself don't ignore it just f find ways to do it I kind of set it in the background for years 16 years um and it just it's just having that fire to do something I have like achieved so much in the that I'm so proud of in the last two years and I haven't done in the last couple of you know decades I um and it's um, taking opportunities I'd never take. I'm pitching. I did a pitching competition. Thing. I did, like I'd never. I'm not the type of person that would ever get on stage. In fact, when I was at school uh, in drama, I just completely. I was the object in the corner. I would not do any of it. And I'm pitching for things. I'm, I'm taking any opportunity I can because I know it's for my own benefit, for my own business. Um, and that's something I've never never done before so you know I'm, I'm proud of that I've achieved that and um yeah that's me you are all so inspiring you're making me want to go out and do stuff and like push myself even more but thank you so much I really appreciate that so I have one last question and I'm gonna put two into it and each of you are gonna have a chance to to kind of say your view 
What would you tell to someone that's considering postgraduate study and what tips or advice would you give to them? Seamus, we'll start with you again. Um, yeah, um, again, I would it's probably on a similar team to what I already mentioned, I guess, is really, really taking time to explore. Uh, if, you, if you're uncertain about a particular job or topic or area of study, which, and again, I can talk to that because I was that, I was that soldier uh, many years ago, I, I think is, is, is maybe eliminate what you really know you don't want to do as a, as a tool to help you focus maybe on the two or three things that you might still be uncertain about, but at least use that to say, well, I'm not, you know, again, sometimes it's maybe not helpful to use the word not, but I have a preference for doing something in languages versus something in science or whatever. So you can actually even use broad categories to help yourself to really connect with what you truly want and what you truly have a passion for. And, and to just, again, use that as a mechanism to, to steer towards the area that you know might most resonate with you and you might not get it right first time around but begin commit to and do take that first step and then you always have the opportunity to tweak and tune and hone in on something more specific as you go through your life go through your career so i'm an example of someone who's started on a certain path and then through through experience and through learning identified yeah my true passion my true experience was in an area a, a lot different from where I actually began my career, which was actually in the IT sector. So again, I would say to people, go with what your best instincts are, but you can always tweak and change and probably will do right throughout your life and right throughout your career. And study is always an opportunity for you whenever you decide and feel it's right for you, I guess. You know, So, so go with your gut and go with your instincts primarily. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Seamus. Beverly, do you want to go next, please? Yeah, I think for me, you know, teachers always think that when you train as a teacher, that's it. You have no opportunities to move um, beyond the classroom. You're very limited and, you know, that's it. You're going to, you know, you spend your entire career in school. But that's not the truth. Teachers actually have a really good skill set, really adaptable. They're used to change. They're used to planning. They're used to um, continual professional development. So I think for and you know, I'm coming at it from an education perspective. I think someone who has perhaps come from an education background, if they have interests in something else, then go for it. You know, there's nothing holding you back, and there's nothing that says you cannot. Um, you go down a different path. So you know, you can use your skills, go into business. You can use your skills, go into IT. Um, so don't box yourself. Don't think that you know you're limited by your experience past. Think creatively think how your experiences actually make you um, a more interesting person and more capable and how they can be applied in different settings. Um, and then like as Seamus said, you know, start to explore those options, look around, look for degrees, courses, opportunities that are available and look for companies or businesses that actually appreciate those skills and who does it, you know, companies that desire them as well. Um, when it comes to choosing then, and thinking, you know, can I can I manage life and work and family and study? Yes, you can. Yes, it, it does take a lot of work, but it's only for a really short time in life. You know, one, two, three years, that's it. And if you can choose a course that you are interested in and you have experience in, well, then you can apply that through your modules. So I did, I have to say, I did find there were periods where it was two o'clock in the morning and I was trying to get an assignment, you know, finished and in submitted by the deadline but there were other times when I was so far ahead because you know, whatever we had to write on or share on um, it, I didn't even have to research because I had the actual experience and it was just more a case of reading up a bit of background to to validate my experience um, so yeah I I think you know sometimes you have to look after yourself and your own interests as well not be selfish but you know if you are not happy where you are if you want to change your career or go down a different route a couple of years extending yourself learning developing is time well spent and i would say go for it because you know there's never a better time than now and you'll regret it in years to come if you don't thank you so much beverly i really appreciate it simon do you want to go next please um, I think it's kind of twofold, but if I was talking to myself before I did this, um, number one is I didn't realise how keen 
uh, like employers are to push you to do this. Um, so I was quite lucky. The employer I worked in was actually an investor in people accredited. Um, so they paid my whole course. They wanted me to go do it. And, you know, they really pushed me to do it. And secondly, it was because it, I, I chose something that was so applicable to what I was doing anyway, it was more like being accredited for the skills and knowledge I was already developing. So the likes of quality systems and production management and things along those lines, that things, things I was doing daily, all day, every day. And then the things that were kind of outside of what I was already doing were things I was interested in, you know, and things I could see the use for in the future. And it was, so it was definitely very applicable to what I was doing. So it was kind of those kind of two things that I thought was going to be challenging. There was going to be a load extra on my plate and then trying to get the funding. Um, but there, there weren't worries at the end of the day. That's great. Thank you so much, Simon. And Emma? Um, I would just say, whatever your interests are, follow them, follow your dreams. And if people can't see them, you know, just go for it. You know, just leave them behind. Um, whatever's inside you, whatever feeling you have about things, whatever you look up all the time on your phone or whatever interest you have, um, use it and use the knowledge you have around it to um, project it for yourself, just to, to make something for yourself and something that you're really passionate about. Because as people say, like, you know, if it's something that you're passionate about, you won't feel like you're working or you won't feel like, you know, you work a day in your life. And that's so true. You know, it doesn't feel like work when you're, when you're doing something that you really, really enjoy. And that's the key to it. You have to know what, what it is that really satisfies you. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my advice. Thank you so much. You've all been absolutely brilliant. I sw I've been so inspired now. I'm going to go off this and think, rethink everything now. It's brilliant. But um, so that just brings the, uh, us to the end of our session. And I really do want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here and share your stories. Um, I'm pretty sure anybody who's going to watch this will be inspired, just like myself, um, and will rethink about what they want uh, to do with their career, whether they want to take under, uh, undertake postgraduate study and what their next steps may be. But um, anyone who is watching, I'd just like to mention that if you are wanting more information, you can go onto our website at ulster.ac.uk forward slash postgrad. And if you do have any further questions, you can email me on postgradstudy at ulster.ac.uk. But thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much again for being here today. Um, and I wish you all the best.